Hi, I'm Aaron Hayes, Hayes' World of Math. I'm here to help you pull together, in this case, some things about building thinking classrooms. And so today we're going to talk about learning card folders. I know at one point this year I said I was going to record a workshop that I did running this, and I ended up not being able to be there for that day. So that's why that's not posted, but I figure I'd get this up while we can. Um, and so what I want to do first is I just kind of want to talk through what the option, what we're going to talk about. Oops. So we're gonna talk about classroom issues and how that works from there. I'm gonna talk about where I found out about learning cards, and then I'm gonna show you actually how to do it. I know a number of you guys have found them off my other videos, but I wanted to kind of put it together so you could actually see what the whole process was. The so classroom issues. A lot of different options here. Let me explain a couple of things that I've noticed over here. Um, in regular classrooms, the problem that I've had here is that um, kids will take the notes and then they never use them. My honors kids tended to not do that so much, but for the most part, kids would take notes, they do the practice, and then you never see the notes again. Some of that was an organizational issue. Some of them, they just didn't think to look back at it. And again, as I said, the honors kids occasionally use notes, which was great, but again, still they weren't using notes as I remember needing to use notes in college. And for the building thinking classrooms part, the, you know, there's the whole consolidating learning chapter where they're talking about, you know, notes do you forget for self. And I was trying to figure out a good way to do this, and then I realized I was already kind of doing it. Um, and so I'll talk through some of that. And that's where the learning card folders come in. Now, a friend of mine got this from Mark Fisher. Um, Christina was down at the AP Stats reading back in 2016, and Mark presented this. There's one night where it's just like professional development and people are sharing things, and that's where this came from. Um, he has all of his AP Stats stuff up on Teachers Pay Teachers. I'll put a link of that down below. And while you're down there, like, subscribe, comment, all that other good stuff that you always know. Um, and I'll put all the resources later in this video as well. But that's where it came from. And then I started using them in Algebra 1, sent him a couple of sh copies of it. He thought it was really good, and we've gone on since then. Now, learning cards in your classroom. Let me explain what they are, because you may have already seen them. I'm going to show you a finished one first. And it is like this. This is one that one of my co-teachers um, who's in the special ed department made for our algebra class. And what it is, is it looks like this. Now notice, it's got this nice waterfall feature down through here. So if I need to find out about rates of change, you can go down here and you're going to pick up everything else. And there is all of your information about rates of change. If I need to go back and solve quadratics using the quadratic formula, I can click on quadratic, or click on. I can put my finger here on quadratic formula and I have this. Couple of things about the setup. Now notice here, I didn't find a regular folder here. These file card folders are a bit smaller. I've cut them down so that they'll actually fit in a binder. And that's why I have three hole punched this. And then the goal here is then, I also make the notes a little bit smaller so it fits out nice. And, okay, so now in terms of designing these, what I do, and I've got a blank one of these down with the Algebra 1 stuff. Have the titles across the top. I have our objective number for our room or for our school. Key features where we can go through and talk through things. I'll usually walk these through with kids. I've got a demo graph here so I can draw a generic um, polynomial, talk about stuff, and then we talk about m behavior here. So as x goes into infinity, what's happening to g, so we can have an idea of where things go. And then notice here, this is our basic level. This is basically what we would have for, like what um, Robert Marzano would talk about. Um, you know, so can we can figure out, do they know the basic skills on this? And then can they apply them down here, which would be more on our focus level, where they're going to have to go through and factor this out and then find the zeros and go from there. Um, I go back and forth with a regular class. I tend to walk them through most of this. I will still have the discussion and pull a lot of it out of them. And so if you look at, if I have three Algebra 1s, if you look at the different Algebra 1s, you will generally see slightly different learning cards. Um, likewise, for honors kids, I'll still probably discuss this, but then I will let them have a little bit of time to focus on this. And that's one thing I need to do more of next year. Um, in terms of the basic setup here again, um, so the big thing too is that, cut these out, I will usually have them cut in half from our printer. Um, or from the person who does all the printing for us. And then from there, the kids, I have scissors and tape out on all the different groups. I have about seven groups, and so I've got seven of, you know, big tape things here, and I've got seven sets of scissors, and kids often bring their own. 
And then from there, they just go through, and I usually do semester one. Let me zoom out here a second. I'll usually do semester one on one side and semester two on the other side. It's not always perfect, but I will always start over here. And then the goal here is that, so the first one goes down here, and then a piece of tape across the top. This is an awful piece of, there we go. There's this. Now, you do have to oftentimes explain to kids they don't want to tape it all in because oftentimes I'll have kids who like you know, put them here and then like I ran out of room. Remind them in the beginning especially that the whole goal here is to waterfall this. So then that way they can easily find it. Now, obviously, if you've been through college, you've seen stuff like this before oftentimes, but this is the way that the kids can then make their own. Um, if kids are absent, I have a box by the front of my door that has all the blank ones in it, so they can copy it down from their um, classmates. Um, my When I team teach this, I will often have the, the other teacher will, if, or whoever, I should say, not going through it, will write stuff down. And then, like in this case here, Courtney ended up photocopying this and making two of them, and they have printed out ones so they can give them to the kids who were absent. And that's pretty much it. Now, the cool part about this is this, is that I have oftentimes, and it was really interesting to see my regular kids, start to pull this out. And so they would use this to review for tests, which is really kind of fun. Um, occasionally, you have to kind of remind them of that. But eventually, it becomes kind of second nature to many of my students. Um, the other thing, too, that I end up doing is that um, Courtney ended up, um, for, their, for some students' IEPs where they can use notes, they say, why don't you just use this? And then that way they can find their information and they have examples and that worked out really, really well instead of having to make new notes over and over and over. Oh, and then the other thing too is that I have a number of students who hold on to these from year to year. Um, some teachers will collect them here and then hand them out to the year, like some algebra teachers will collect them and hand them out to the geometry teachers. Some teachers just let the kids have them. Um, my honors kids were quite excited given how much overlap there is between honors algebra two and pre-calculus. Um, to go through and do that um, so that hold on to them for next year or uh, use them then. And the last thing, resources. Um, I've got a couple of things here for you. I have two folders that I'm sharing. I've got um, L2 learning cards. So if you go to the link down below, it will take you to this. It's got a list of everything that we've done. Um, I, it's the order of the objectives that we do them. Um, I, this is learning card index up here I have not finished yet, so you can ignore that. I also have a link here to the original presentation that Mark Fisher did. And then I also have another one here for you for the Algebra 2. This one's a little bit more pulled together. Um, because with that one, I have, I do have a spreadsheet of them. The folder is just the folder that you just saw. I also have a link of a lot of the videos that I have there as well, so you can kind of get a sense of how I talk through it. But the other thing about this learning card folder over here is that I do have a number of them completed, so then that way you can also use that as a reference. So I hope you find that helpful. Um, sorry it's taken so long to get that together. Um, make sure you comment down below if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear, and we can get that straightened out. And I will see you next time.